first thing we need to do with our nettles, obviously, once we've stripped the, the leaves off of them, is we're going to crush the stems, especially at the, uh, the nodule parts on the stem where you get a hard ring. Right, OK. Against the back of your knife? Yep. All I'm doing is literally just pulling it through, pressing it against the handle of my knife. Yeah. You could hit it against a tree with a stick or we're just basically trying to get the nettle as flat as possible. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can extract the fibres from it because we don't want the, the pithy bit in the middle, we just want the fibres that go up the, up the span. Now if you break it in half and give it a bit of a, a wiggle, you start to see how the fibres break away from the outside piece. Now this is the bit that we want. Is this outside fibre. So as we start to break the nettle away, we can start to strip off the fibre in lengths. Now this is this is the bit we want. This is this piece here that's coming away. Now if you can get that off as long as possible, you make for a much easier job in a bit when we actually come to do the cordage. Now, just roll the nettle around, get as much of this fibre off it, off the outside of it as you can. Ideally, when you're making cordage, you would dry this first um, because the first time it dries is when it shrinks the most. So if you don't do that and you tie something up with it, it shrinks, it'll all just shred itself to pieces. Um, but you will need to moisten it when you come to actually make it into cordage. So for now we'll just make it straight into cordage wet. Um, but normally you would leave the, leave the fibres out to dry and then moisten them again in your mouth to roll them and make them into cordage. So, once you've got a few decent lengths, we'll, uh, we'll start uh, breaking it down and making some cordage out of it. Okay, that'll do for now. wide strips, you can just break them down a little bit more. Okay. What I'm going to do, take a piece of cordage in the middle and start to roll it. Hold one end and roll the other end. Once you've rolled it nice and tight, let the two come together and they'll start to twist. Now if you keep rolling these in the same direction, each way, will slowly start to twist together. So roll one side then the other and bring them together. Roll one side, roll the other, and they'll naturally start to twist. Now there's a few different ways of doing this. Because you're rolling them both in the same direction, you can in fact do it rolling both side by side on your trouser leg and they will naturally start to twist into cordage. As you can see as, it, as, as both sides twist they start to knock together. It's as simple as that. And as soon as one end starts to, to go through, just lay another piece next to it and keep twisting. So keep twisting one side, twist the other side together. And then you're starting to create string. And 
with enough of this, just create many, many lengths of this, and then do the process again with those pieces, they'll start wrapping around each other, and eventually you can build up, you can have rope as thick as you want it, or string cordage as strong as you want. Is that how they used to make it out of hemp? Yeah. It's exactly the same process, so it's just a constant <coughs> rolling and letting them twist. So as long as you're rolling both sides in the same direction, the rolling motion actually starts locking the fibres together. That, that's what causes the twist, and they'll lock together. Oh, good, we've got a piece broken off, so what we'll do, we'll pretend that was a short bit, and we'll add another length of cordage in there. So now I just keep twisting both sides. I've just laid the new piece right next to the, the old piece. And I'm twisting them up and again they'll start to twist together. And you'll have a bit of a loose end where the new piece went in, but that doesn't matter, you can trim all that off. Once your cordage is finished, you can start to trim that down. So that's how you make cordage. Could mm. you reckon that you could make that strong enough to do a bow drill? Easily, yeah. yeah? yeah. Like, like you said, you just got to. You just got to build up patience enough to do it. Yeah. You, you, yeah, you, you create. It's all in the preparation again. Create all your fibres, get them all laid out, get them all dry, wind them all together. It's quite time-consuming. You do it with drier, ideally. Yeah, yeah. You have to let them dry first because right, that's okay. when they contract. Right. Okay. Um, and then you moist, moisten them through your mouth, or whatever, just to just so that you can roll them and get them to bind together. And then you you you'd need probably three or, or three four foot minimum um, and then bind them together as well and yeah eventually you would effectively get cordage strong enough to do bow drill right oh so Brill. not quite as resilient as paracord <laughs> but it, it, it is doable it's doable Let's just see, it's coming on, coming on right, isn't it? I haven't, uh, I haven't made any cordage just yet. Yeah.